I created this 2022 developer roadmap for those people looking to get into development or already in there and looking to improve their journey. And so this roadmap here is something I wish I had when I was starting out as a developer. It's really gonna be covering all the bases that I need to be able to get myself back up to date. Because even if you are a senior developer, this is sort of the things that you need to know to be able to continue on your journey. Now, what I've found is that I've been lagging behind in development. I don't know about the latest CSS frameworks or the latest JavaScript. I don't know about TypeScript or hooks properly. And I feel like I'm a bit ancient now. So I need to get myself back into the game. So I've put together this roadmap to be able to help myself do this. I think this should help a lot of people because it'll be the same framework that I'll be using to get myself up to speed. And I think this framework isn't about what is the best language or what you should specifically learn, but rather how you should learn it and how you should go about the methodology of getting yourself up to date. So let's take a look at it. And if I was starting again as a developer or even trying to improve myself, which is something I'll actually be doing this year, is I would be working on my foundations. I think this is one of the most important aspects of being a programmer that so often gets overlooked as we get excited for new languages and new frameworks out there. And yet, everything that we do as developers is based on these foundations. Now, when I'm talking about foundations, I'm talking about the essentials of JavaScript and HTML and CSS. These are the building blocks that you'll end up using for everything as you move along, whether you're doing backend, which is on Node.js, which is on JavaScript, or whether it's on frontend, which is React, which is technically on JavaScript, or even if it's TypeScript, which is technically still JavaScript. All of these things are going to be the ones that you're going to lay down brick by brick. And if you don't have a solid understanding of those, then everything you do afterwards will be flawed or won't be as good as it could be. This is something that you can do in multiple ways. So let's actually have a look at how you can improve your foundations. And so one of the best resources to learn your foundations is actually one that is entirely free. I know a lot of people that often go and try and learn web dev and they ask me in the comments, where should I learn this? Often jump to paid resources out there. So maybe they'll head over to Udemy and pay for a course, or maybe they'll, for example, go to an actual physical location to learn development. But a lot of those places are also jumping the gun because they are paid and sometimes you might not get out of them what you're expecting. So what I would highly recommend for everyone who's learning their foundations to do is to go onto free code camp. This is one of the best websites and best resources out there. They actually have a large YouTube following as well as a great website where you can learn everything that you need for your foundations. So foundations basically means things like your HTML, your CSS and your JavaScript, as well as maybe even foundations of things like responsive web design or for example, React. It's the baseline that you'll be using for everything that you do moving forward. Of course, there's more than one way to skin a cat. And realistically, there's other avenues you can take if you want to learn as well. You can self-learn by getting a book or, for example, heading over to YouTube and just doing some YouTube tutorials. It's really up to you. Personally, I go down the self-learning way because this way you'll be learning the most that you possibly can and you'll be learning it a lot better at your own pace. Whereas sometimes a course that is paid or for example, going to a classroom might not be the best learning environment. So you really have to pick something that works for you. And so the second item here is experimentation, which I think is also one of the most important things that developers often go unrecognized as one of the main ways they improve as developers. So if you're starting out and you know your HTML, your CSS and your JavaScript, the next important thing to do is to experiment with what you've learned. This doesn't mean that you're going into another tutorial or reading the documentation to build something that's already there. Instead, what you need to do is go out there and build something completely new. The way you can do this is normally by implementing maybe something you're interested in, whether it's a project or a hobby, and trying to build something around that. I find that helps you really push the boundaries of what you've already learned. Like for example, when I was learning React and I jumped in and tried to build something with React, that's when I really tested myself and that way I actually grew to understand React a lot better than just going through the basic tutorial I found on Udemy. So how would I go about implementing experimentation? Well, it really is a bit unique to every case because everyone else will have their own idea of what they want to create. So I can't really specifically tell you what to do, but rather I can give you some examples of what I've done to really push the boundaries of what I've learned. 
When I was first learning React, for example, I wanted a project or something to really test out my skills. I'd just gone through the documentation of React and I was looking to build something. I looked internally at what kind of hobbies I had and at that point it was things like badminton and maybe he's doing some gym, but I didn't really think those worked really well for creating something in React. So I looked outside of myself at the place I was working at and at that time I was working in an organization that was quite large. So what I decided to do was we're having a bit of problems trying to find people. So I actually pulled in an Excel spreadsheet of all the people in the organization and I tried to create a website around it, a staff directory, so to speak. And I decided to use React to really test my understanding of it and to increase my learning of it. Doing this one project where I created this staff directory in React actually was the experimentation phase for me where I learned more about React than any other tutorial I did. I think this gave me a good idea of how to use components, how the actual props propagated down the different components as well, and how to use state. It really pushed the boundaries and I had to learn quite a lot more of React just by doing this one project. And so if you're just starting off with HTML and CSS, a good thing to experiment with is just creating your own portfolio because that's a nice step that you can take forward as well as showcase when you're getting more projects in and you don't have to worry about it too much. Whereas if you're learning something more advanced, like for example, when I learned say Tailwind CSS, I actually created that as a SAS and I implemented Tailwind CSS without knowing a single thing about it. And by the end of the 30 days, I knew Tailwind CSS inside and out and I don't wanna go back to any other framework now. And so now we're at number three, specialization, which I think is just as important as the last two options we've looked at, because this is the part as a journey for your developer roadmap, where you have to select what it is you want to do. We've learned the fundamentals and we've experimented with them, but now development branches out into a hundred different possibilities, whether it's front end or back end, Angular or React, whether it's the back end databases or server hosting, a developer will have to select one main thing that they want to really be knowledgeable in and sort of grow into that understanding so that they can be an expert in this field. By doing so, you're going to open up lots more possibilities than if you just try to generally understand everything, which is actually a little bit impossible because there are just too many things to go through. And to apply specialization in your path, have a look at this developer roadmap that I created. While it might seem overwhelming to start off with, it actually gives you a good idea of just how many options there are out there. So whether it is backend you wanna learn or frontend, whether it is, for example, machine learning or maybe cloud hosting or databases, it's a important step right now is to dabble in and test out each one of them to get a better feel of what it is that you really enjoy doing. And by doing this, you'll actually have a feel for some of the actual options out there and a better understanding of them while also growing with your understanding of yourself and what it is that you want to do for your future. For me, when I specialized, I started finding that I really like learning about React. And when I learned more about React, I liked implementing libraries like Next.js and for example, Charts.js and creating graphical interfaces. So I found that my specialization was in front end. But this didn't mean that I left backend unknown. I actually did dabble in backend and learned it quite well. And I did actually like and specialize a little bit in Node.js for backend because it's complementary to the front end, both running on JavaScript, especially when you're running React and Node.js. But this gave me a solid foundation that I knew a little bit of front end, a little bit of backend. And when I was applying for jobs, that actually made me shine quite well. So this is a great step and make sure that you take a good look at what it is you want to do because this will bleed into the future steps of your career and even your learning in general. And so here we move to number four, which is networking. And I think this is something that a lot of developers don't recognize because of the type of work that we do. We're often in front of computers, which also means that sometimes we're working from home or from the office, but we're just not interacting with people that much. This means that we miss out on the opportunities to make new friends, collaborate with new businesses and find new opportunities that we might not otherwise be able to. So in order to change that, we really have to put ourselves out there. This means that we should go to networking events, whether those are startup 
workshop weekends or other opportunities, we really need to talk to more people, whether it's out and about when you are or even within your own organization, because all those opportunities are really often done through networking. And this gets to the point where it's not what you know, but who you know. And so to apply networking, there are so many opportunities out there that it's really hard to list them all. But let me go through a couple to let you know how you can get started. One of the easiest ways is just to start interacting with people. I personally did this by jumping onto Twitter and just following the tech scene. There are some amazing people out there sharing great resources. And by having a look at them and having a look at some of the examples of what they're doing, you'll get a better idea of how to do better networking in general. For example, Danny Thompson came in with basically no following and no understanding, and he grew his own tech following space and networking to a perfect degree with over 100,000 followers on Twitter. And he did this by simply talking to people and providing value back to the community and helping the community. This is a perfect example of good networking. This even got him hired at Google, which is absolutely amazing. Personally, some more down to earth networking that you could do is just going to local startup events. I know that here in Australia, every month or so, we have a startup weekend where lots of like minded people go and network and create ideas. And this is also a great way to get to know different people. But I'm sure there are other things like business community forums that you can go to where you can start meeting with people. And even when you're out and about just talking with your friends and family, just start talking to people more about what they do and how they do it. And just start making those connections because those will essentially lead to new opportunities that you might not otherwise have. And so number five here is freelancing. I think this is something that all developers should be doing. Whether you're a junior developer or a senior developer, it's one of those opportunities that allows you to test and push yourself to continue to grow as a developer, as well as earning a side income. So if you're already in a career, this helps you really learn new things if you're trying to push yourself to learn new languages. And if you haven't even got a job yet, then this can be the stepping stone to get one because it will show real world experience of stuff that you've done. If you've built up a network freelancing can also be quite easy to do because you should be able to get recommendation based on what you've specialized in. As you can see, all of these things start to work in order. And this is why I think this developer roadmap is more important than just what you should know, but how you should know it. There is a great freelancing bundle that you guys should check out by my friend Kyle. So let me just have a link in the description and give you a quick brief so that if you do want to get into freelancing and want to know more about it, this will help you out. And so this bundle here is for any developers or designers looking to get started with freelancing, which I think is such an important thing. But there's many lessons here that you can learn without having to learn the hard way like I did, which took years. Things like how to make good proposals and how to talk with a client and make the sale and how to price yourself accordingly. All of these things were hard to figure out and this should at least get you started. And freelancing per se is such an important thing to do at the start and throughout your entire career. It leads to new opportunities and it really tests the boundaries of what you've been doing. For me, even before I started doing web development full time, I was doing freelancing all the time. And this meant that I had the opportunity to work with new technology. I was always pushing the boundaries of what I knew. I was making good networking connections to showcase some of the actual real world example work that I was doing. I was also having a bit of a side income as to my normal job where I could buy myself maybe a little bit of a better monitor or a better keyboard or a better mouse. And all of this just meant that I was enjoying the work I was doing because I was only picking the kind of work that I actually wanted to do. Now, outside of this, I think that freelancing is a important thing that everyone should do at some stage or another, because it gives you another side of the development journey that you get to experience. And this makes you more knowledgeable about what things are worth and how much time they take to do, especially when you're doing them all yourself. And so we move on to one of the final steps here, which is number six application. This is where you can start applying for actual jobs or even applying yourself to build your own products or services. Now, I think that this is one of the final steps because now you should have the confidence to really apply for a job and be guaranteed to get it. This also means that you shouldn't be recycling the previous steps that we've done where you might be doing tutorials over and over. This is the stage where it's time to move out of that and really applying yourself to new possibilities. 
for me personally, if I'm already in a career, this means that maybe I want to try and apply myself by creating a SaaS or a new product. Or if I haven't got a career yet, this is where I'm going to be really hunting for jobs, really showcasing my freelancing, my networking, as well as some of the specializations that I have. Because now you have those foundations, you can pretty much do anything that you want to, you just have to apply yourself. So in this step, what I recommend is taking a step back and having a look at your portfolio as well as your resume and really trying to make sure that it shines. Then trying to go out there and start applying for jobs. There's always opportunities out there and sometimes you don't have to actually just apply for jobs that are listed. You can follow companies that you really like in your area and you can reach out to them directly and just even meet them in person. I think that's a great way to apply for a position. Another thing that you can do is that if you're already in a career and you're quite happy and stable, but you still feel like you're urging yourself to do something new and interesting, then go ahead and just do it. Just set aside some time every day to be consistent and create that new thing. For me personally, I like to do something new every month. So whether that's creating a new SaaS or creating a digital product or creating these YouTube videos, I think that's a great way to keep yourself active and relevant. And so we're here at the final step, number seven, which is repetition. This doesn't mean that we're repeating what we're doing constantly, but instead we're repeating the cycle of this developer roadmap. And this can have implications for us as developers if we don't do it, more so than if we do. The implications are that our career as developers are constantly changing. There is no such thing as one version of JavaScript. Instead, we're moving from JavaScript to ES 2020 to ES 2021, and constantly things are improving and changing. And if we don't stay in tune with those changes, we're going to be made redundant really quickly. So whether it's React or the depreciated Angular or anything in between, Try and repeat the steps of relearning your fundamentals, of specializing in them, on creating your networks, on continuously doing this. And this will ensure your growth path as a developer because you won't become stale and boring and out of date. And this is why this last step is one of the easiest as well as hardest to implement. Because it means you have to start and it means you have to be consistent each year as you're learning new things. For me, this is something that I'm lagging behind on because I didn't learn the latest CSS or React or TypeScript. And now I have to go back to my foundations and actually learn those and experiment around and test them out and then finally specialize in them and apply myself, showcasing them maybe in a tutorial for you guys. This roadmap is for my future, but it's also for your future. Don't consider what you want to learn. Consider how you want to learn it. Have a roadmap for your year ahead and let me know what you're thinking for this year and maybe for next year for your own development journey. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you guys hit like and subscribe. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.